How's it going guys? I finally completed the K969 rebuild and so far I'm pretty happy with the results. Um, I'm done mounting all the electronics and I mean I barely got them all to fit in there but they fit underneath this P1 GTR body. Uh, this little guy kind of reminds me of the, uh, the Mad Mac so I'm probably going to call it the Mini Mad Mac. Um, hopefully Mad Mike doesn't mind. <laughs> but yeah I'm, I'm actually uh, happy with how this came out. The, uh, the steering mod seems to be doing pretty well. Uh, all the electronics I have on there are good to go. Everything's working fine. Um, I still have some more tuning to do and some test driving. Um, uh, you know, I've, you've seen some test driving, it's doing pretty well, but I can get it better than that. So uh, I need to spend some more time with it, but I just wanted to show you where I'm at right now and then how I mounted all the electronics on here and any other little thing that I've added or changed, I just want to fill you guys in on. Um, so yeah, this, this looks pretty good. Uh, it came out pretty much the way I was expecting it to, um, or at least I was hoping it to come out. Um, it's, it drives pretty well. It's hard to drive on my garage floor, but when I drive it on hardwood floor, it drives a, a lot better. So it's just something about my garage floor that's really hard to, to control. It's like almost like driving on ice, but at least on hardwood floor, it drives really nice. And it, it drives pretty well on tile as well. Um, but yeah, so far everything is going the way I was, I was hoping it would. Uh, I'll give you a, a little showcase here of everything I've done. It looks like there's a lot going on on here, which, um, because there is. <laughs> but yeah, I packed all the electronics on here and I made it low profile enough to where it doesn't interfere with the P1 GTR body because there's, there's barely any room or clearance underneath this body to really fit fit anything so I had to do a lot of um, soldering and desoldering to to get everything out of the way like connectors and, and stuff like that to, to get it low enough to where it's not interfering with the, the canopy um, so I'll just go from like back to front here on what I have so back here is my little Wi-Fi module for my digital LEDs and I can just plug those in real quick so you guys can get an idea so one when I'm done with everything, I'll add these LEDs underneath the body because um, I do this to most of my Mini Z bodies. And what's nice about these little digital LEDs is that you can use a, uh, a Wi-Fi app from your phone and they will, uh, you know, you can change colors or make them do different things. Right now I just have them on uh, like color changing just so you can see that they change all the different colors so whatever color you want to set them uh, you know they'll, they'll be green blue red whatever you want them to be but right now I just have it you know going showcasing all the colors so that's what this back here is for so I can talk to this little Wi-Fi module with the, the phone app and then change the colors to whatever I want they can also um, like do different flashing sequences. They can they can kind of like dance to music and stuff. If you put like a play a song on your phone, and they can actually uh, change colors to the music. So it's pretty cool. You know, there's a lot of uh, cool stuff you can do with those. Um, those are the older versions. I have some newer ones that are much closer, much closer together. So there's more LEDs per every uh, millimeter. So there's probably about four or five for every two on these older versions. I wish these came in black, but they only come in white, but it doesn't matter because they're going to be underneath the car anyway. So that's what that's for. Take this, get this out of the way. So that's for the digital LEDs. Um, this right here obviously is the receiver and I shortened the antennas so they're not just dangling really far out the back because they were way too long. So I just cut them and then just exposed the little elements here. So. I can get the, the signal to work in, with my radio. So you just match the same uh, length of the wire from what the, the original wires were and just, you know, make sure they're the same length and it should do the same thing. Um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of tucked away. It's hard to see because I have this little five volt regulator in the way. I haven't double-sided double taped this down yet because uh, I wanted to show you, you know, all the wiring here. But this little five volt regulator is for my FBV equipment. So eventually I'll add a camera and a VTX on here so I can drive in first person and this little five volt regulator will give my, my uh, video transmitter and my camera enough power to run. 
um, because the car runs on 2S, so it'll drop the 2S voltage, which is 8.4, down to 5 volts, which most of my camera equipment runs on 5 volt. So that's what this is for, and I just stick it on top of there, and it, it doesn't interfere with anything, it doesn't bother or nothing, so it, it's okay being on top of the receiver. So all these wires in here are, so this uh, channel one goes to the gyro, and the gyro goes to the, to the servo, and then these wires, for channel two are going to the ESC, which obviously is for your throttle. And then can't really show you too much else, but channel three goes to the gyro as well uh, for the, uh, the gain to adjust the gyro gain. And then channel four goes to a um, channel switcher, which is actually underneath here behind the battery. I'll probably take that out of the way later so I can show you. But that channel switcher allows me to turn my headlights and taillights on and off. That's what these two plugs are for. I'll plug those in real quick just to show you uh, what I can do with that. These are just these are some uh, headlights and taillights I have for some other cars. I'm not putting them on the uh, P1 GTR. I have some other headlights and taillights I'll use for those. But I have a little switch set up on here. I'll turn them on. I only really need a two position switch, but this is a three position because that's all that's on this uh, radio. So when it goes to the top, it's on, and then middle and down are, are both off. It's just when it goes up, it's on. So that's on channel four. And and that's pretty nice so I can just turn those on and off they don't they don't have any like functioning like brakes like they don't light up and stuff uh, you know when I actually brake or anything they're just on all the time which is fine um, I'd rather have you know headlights and taillights on uh, instead of having them you know none at all so that's what that's for and then got the gyro on as well um, This is the uh, Fury Tech ESC right here. Uh, and this is the little uh, Bluetooth module that's for it. And I can actually tune the car from a Wi-Fi app. So yeah, I can do a lot of adjustments on here. Right now, it's, I don't know why it's having trouble connecting. Let me refresh it. There we go. All right, so you can change uh, a bunch of different uh, configurations and stuff on here. So you got your telemetry. You can change it, you know, for forward reverse with brake, I don't know, with brake, without brake, you know, just forward reverse, all that kind of stuff. Voltage cutoffs. Change the direction of the motor from here too. So if it's everything's backwards, then you can just tap this and change it, and it'll just reverse the uh, direction of the the motor. Startup power. You know, you can change how how powerful you want the. Uh, the motor to be you know right now I'm only about 60% instead of 100% uh, because 100 is almost it's too it's too much power so I knocked it down to 60% and that's all I really need for drifting and same with like reverse I don't need more than like 50% plus uh, for reverse and then throttle there's punch and everything it's almost like it gives it that extra push you know a little bit more of a, a jump start and everything but I don't need I really don't need that on this on a drift car because this is for drifting and for racing so there's probably a lot more in here that are helpful for racing than for drifting a lot of this stuff I don't really need for drifting but it's nice that I can come in here and do that and if you want to calibrate the uh, motor uh, you can just calibrate it here you just tap the calibration and then with your radio you just go full throttle neutral and then reverse and I'll probably have to uh, Recalibrate this. There you go. It's back to zero. All right. So 
that's what that does. And then the throttle curve, this is where I knocked it down to 60. So I have this kind of a curve going right now. I still have a lot of tuning to do where I can mess around with these numbers to give it the right amount of power where I need it to be when I'm drifting and everything. So right now, this seems to be working pretty well, um, but I, I still have some more testing to do to get you know, a better idea where I want it to be. And the advanced setting, everything is kind of turned off right now because I, I knocked down the power from 100% and everything it kind of just uh, disabled everything. But if you had the power up to 100%, you could enable boost, like turbo, and like different speeds and stuff, which, I mean, I haven't really tested that yet to really see how it feels. You know, it's kind of funny thinking, you know, you know boost and turbo on a little, you know, brushless motor. But yeah, those are um, some different features you can do on this little Fury Tech Momentum ESC. And you can just tune it right here from your phone. So that's nice. And then this is the, um, the little Wi-Fi module app for the uh, digital LEDs, which I can change the colors and the, the different types of you know things you can change it to for uh, you know sequences and stuff. So it's nice to have you know this ability to do these things from phone apps. Which I'll do a video on the LEDs and the Fury Tech Momentum. I'll probably do a video doing the tuning and stuff from the app. Separately from this one, I'm just kind of going over everything right now in this video, just to give you an idea of what I have on here and where it's at. And then right here is the DOS Micro uh, V6, uh, little gyro. Um, I actually took off the little connector that usually comes on it right there, because uh, I needed a little bit more low profile, because it was, it was almost interfering with the, um, with the front windshield, so. I figured just let me desolder it and then just solder some wires directly to it. And the reason why I'm not using the middle wire because that's for power. And I'm actually uh, powering my servo from a little five volt regulator I have tucked away in here. So I want my servo to have its own five volt regulator to work off of instead of taking the power from the ESC or from the receiver. Because the receiver's taking the full 2S, uh, you know, 8.4 uh, volts of voltage and this the servo shouldn't go any higher than five or six volts, so I can't just run direct power through the gyro into the um, into the servo. So I'm giving it a dedicated five volt regulator to power the servo, and it's got enough amps on it. So these little these little five volt regulators, like this one, has about a one and a half amp uh, power supply that it can put out, and it can take between six to thirty volts, and it can spit out either either five volt or nine volts. But obviously, I'm only I'm only setting it to five volts. Um, but I have one more tucked under here, one more of these that's for the servo, and I have a different uh, little 5 volt regulator under there as well that's for the LEDs. So all the LEDs have their own 5 volt regulator because all these little electronics, you know, they need power and they, they ask for a lot of amps when it, when it comes down to it. And you want to make sure that they all have uh, enough power to be able to run right without, you know, taking too much power from one another. Because I really wouldn't want my servo running off the same, you know, 5 volt regulator with the LEDs and this and that because they're all sharing that power and they might not have enough amps because the servo needs a lot of a lot of power by itself, especially with the, uh, with the gyro on. So I just gave it its own dedicated 5 volt regulator and I used that space above the servo in there to to put those two 5 volt regulators under, out of the way. So that was a good spot because I was, you know, pretty much out of room on top here and I can only put so much more up here without it just getting way too cluttered. Um, and it might look like there's a, like there's a lot of clutter going on, but really it's just the wires are just you know pushed down and out of the way. But everybody's just sitting side by side, and nobody's really interfering with anything. Because I've already you know test driven the car and everything runs fine, so none of this is interfering with each other. Everything works fine. So this is you know how how it's come out so far. And I I use these little batteries too on top of the stock one that came with it, and you know I'll, I'll plug that one in here in a minute. But I was just using this one just to kind of showcase everything. But everything tucks away nice and neat and nothing interferes with the body and that's exactly what I was going for. Now when it comes to this DOS Micro uh, Gyro, it's really nice. Um, the thing about the V6 is that you have to use an aftermarket receiver and radio to be able to uh, control the gains. Uh, unlike the V5 where you have a little dial on it where you change it from there, you can't do that with the V6. I don't know if I can do this because I'm too close to the camera. But I use this little dial right here to control the gains of the uh, of the gyro. So I just turn it to the right, and it'll do the uh, the slow return. And if I turn it to the left, it'll do the fast return. 
and I like it somewhere around 50% for the slow return, and that's where this is at right now. And that seems to do pretty well when it comes to the control. If the fast return is a little bit too much, and anything over 50 is a little bit chaotic to where it starts to uh, do a lot of shaking and stuff. So, but when it's actually on the ground and the wheels are on the table or on the, you know on the floor or whatever, it's it's a little it's it's more controlled. It looks a little bit more jittery when it's up in the air, but when it's actually on the ground and table, it has good control. And then out here, I have uh, little tungsten weights because this, um, this build definitely needed uh, uh, some weight distribution to kind of help get this thing to control correctly because it was a little bit too light in the front end and it definitely needed a little bit of weight in the back end as well. So I added some tungsten weights right here on the, on the tongue, which just barely clear underneath the hood here where they don't interfere. And I added caster to the, uh, the front steering. So, that actually helped the control and the handling a lot because without the caster, it was it was a little bit more difficult to uh, to get this thing to drift correctly. But the problem with the caster is that it was it was a little bit hard to make work with this style because of the way the K969 is designed. It doesn't really leave me a, uh, leave me a lot of room to make caster work or even have the ability to adjust it. And what I had to do was the 3D print mount that I have down here that hooks the swing arms on. I had to shift it out a millimeter, and then I had to shift these arms about a millimeter or two back that way with these like little you know plastic washers or whatever to push it further that that way to give it more of a, a lean in that direction you know, let me uh disconnect it so i can kind of show you it's not a lot of caster but it's definitely better than um you know no caster at all and it does make a difference when it comes to the control I can, I can already tell a difference before when I didn't have it and at, when I changed it to having it, it made a big difference on how well this thing handled. So, so caster was a big help um, and I can't really go any further than that. Uh, and also when, you, when you add caster, it kind of shifts the wheel you know back in the wheel well so that's why i had to bring the bottom uh forward and then bring the the top back to keep the wheel still in the center of the wheel well because if i just just change the caster say on top without messing with the bottom then the wheel would get closer to this side of the wheel well and it actually would start hitting um you know this side of the wheel well here um and if i did the, you know vice versa then it could get closer to the front so shifting the bottom and then shifting the top at the same time keeps it center to where it's not interfering with anything when it's turning so um, also, I added weight to the front of the body. I put a couple tungsten weights here. I just held in with some double-sided tape for now. And it's just out of the way of my little, my little front clip. And then I put two tungsten weights in the back here. And these are 14 grams a piece. So they're really heavy for how small they are. That's what's great about tungsten is it's a really dense uh, metal. So two of those back there and some small little half pieces in the front here and then some of these smaller pieces up here because I couldn't put anything bigger than this up front because it would hit, it would hit underneath here, which I might actually uh, grind away this material because you wouldn't, you wouldn't see from up here, it would actually make these vents more realistic if I got rid of this area. So I might do that later on and just cut those out of the way, maybe make some more space up there so I can fit some bigger weights. But right now this is enough weight to where it's drifting really well. So I might not even need to, I might just leave it the way it is. I guess I'll plug in the actual battery here. And then yeah, once once I plug the battery in and I tuck all the wires away and stuff, and I'm gonna double-sided tape this down so this won't be, you know, dangling, but I just wanted to show you the wiring first before I did that. And the metal gears in there actually work really well. They sound pretty quiet. They're not like too rattly, too loud. Um, I put a little bit of grease in there and stuff too to help out. Uh, and like I said, this is at 60% 60, 60 power. So 
it's not actually all the way up to 100 because it can go a lot faster than this, but I don't need any more speed than this when I'm drifting. And then, is it, then reverse. Full throttle. And then uh, slow all the way up. So it's got good control. This ESC, this Fury Tech ESC is actually really nice. It's got really good control over throttle. And of course, I like the fact that I can tune everything and adjust the, uh, the throttle right there on the phone app. So I can test drive it, then stop, then change the, the throttle curve and stuff right there on the phone app, which, I mean, you can change the throttle curve on, a ra on the radio as well. So it's not like you have to have that, but it's just a nice feature to have. And on top of all the other features on there that you can uh, <clears throat> utilize. So yeah, that's basically how this thing is going. Um, I'm gonna make separate videos on each electronic or at least some of these, like the Fury Tech Momentum ESC. I'll do a video on just the overall setup with the Wi-Fi app. The, uh, the, the Wi-Fi module, I might do one for the digital LEDs again. The, uh, the, the receiver for the Radio Link um, RC6GS V2 that I have, this, this V7 or or I forgot what the name of this one is. Yeah, look at it again. Let me check. <laughs> the R7FG, that one. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty easy to set up, but I might make a video on that if anyone's curious. And then of course I will do a video on the DOS Micro V5 and V6 uh, gyros, just so everyone can get an idea what the difference is between the V5 and the V6. Cause I've looked online and there's not a lot of information out there about the V6. And a lot of people don't know that the V6 can't be controlled from the board. You need to have an aftermarket receiver and radio that you have to hook up you know, to channel three to be able to adjust the gains on a little dial like I do on my, on my radio link here. So I'll go over that in another video. I just wanted to do a quick overview of how everything's going and I'm happy with how this has come out. Um, if I make any more changes, I will let you guys know. But so far, uh, everything's going really well. So. I hope you guys uh, learned something and stay tuned for the next few video videos and I hope you guys have a good day.